I think there is good evidence that, of course, the earlier in life you treat your patients with AIT, the better. So I would really recommend um, that um, children by the age of five um, receive AIT, mostly if they have a f familiary um, predisposition, yeah, they have a family history or they have quite severe symptoms and a perineal allergy and sensitization, these children are the ideal target population for ART. Ideal candidates are probably those with allergic rhinitis but without asthma, but possibly with some indication that the allergic rhinitis is likely to spread down to their lower respiratory tract. And that indication might be bronchial hyperreactivity. It might be the fact that they get wheezy with colds. It might be the fact that their ENO gets elevated during the hay fever season. Looking at the data we have, I think those with single allergen, maybe dual allergen, so not, not massively polysensitized, um, and whom in, in whom there might be hints that they're going to get asthma too. So they have a family history, they've got other markers of atopy, not just allergic rhinitis, maybe they've had atopic dermatitis when they were younger. Um, so that sort of history, um, that sort of patient, and they've maybe had the odd bout of wheeze, but not yet full-blown asthma and nothing there at this point in time, that would be the sort of patient. The challenges, of course, are to increase the awareness of the data which we already have. But the challenge is also to improve our designs of our clinical trials, real-world evidence and so on. We need more of this data, we need more of these um, important um, yeah, findings um, for our patients, such as um, the BREATH trial, for example, a real-world evidence um, trial based on prescription data, I think, on big data, and I think this is very important, very crucial for the future that we increase the level of evidence res, um, regarding this question. The big current challenge to the prevention of asthma by AIT is concordance with therapy. We know that many AIT patients do not complete their full two or three years of therapy. This is particularly true of sublingual immunotherapy, but also true of subcutaneous. So until we can get really good concordance, then I think we are unlikely to be able to prevent asthma. I think the main challenge is, um, is, is the investment of patients and families into three years of treatment. Um, and I think that's why it has to be there really to treat the disease they've got, the AR, the allergic rhinitis. Because I think if you're not, people need to be feeling some value of the therapy. I think it's very hard for most parents and most children um, to really invest into something just in case it stops them getting asthma. I don't think we have enough to say it's worth that. Um, now, as my child, maybe I might be more aggressive. Um, you know, and I often, when I'm often talking to adults too, you know, I think people often will say, look, you know, they've got, less, they're getting, getting worse rhinitis, maybe occupational rhinitis, they're getting a bit worse. And I'm thinking there about how might we prevent, you know, the asthma. I think people, or they're getting first hints of it, then I think the people are willing to sometimes invest in that. And they may have to pay for it in certain, certain parts of the world where I work. So I think it's, I think there actually it, it is worthwhile, but I think it's an honest conversation.